Hello YouTube, welcome to my Hidden Soup channel. Uh, today I have an intense one for you. I uh, want to kind of get some closure on some ideas that uh, I've been discussing here and around online. Uh, ideas that I think have been therapeutic for me to kind of cope with some of uh, some of the stuff we'll, we'll get into here. Um, but first I want to do like a little disclaimer about something that was, that's been bugging me and it's kind of about severity. So I'm, I'm diagnosed schizotypal personality disorder. I like to pronounce it schizotypal, but, uh, sometimes of course it's, it's pretty severe, like, like homeless person severe. And I thought of an example in my life of that sort of severity and maybe kind of a way to reason with with this severity issue. It was a person that um, was homeless that um, a family was uh, uh, would let stay at their their house sometimes um, when it was cold, especially you know. And this person fit all the boxes, you know, the odd eccentric, you know, seemed locked in their head about something or other most of the time, ruminative thoughts, um, something that seemed like OCD to me. Um, and uh, this person, you could tell that the way the world is, this kind of like rat race sort of feeling you get out of out of the world it was tormenting to him like the idea of of working for for a wage somewhere was tormenting to him and as a gesture of goodwill the family that would uh, help him out tried to get him to to do a painting job and he uh, he didn't uh, and ba basically he spent pretty much a whole day doing almost, uh, uh, having done almost nothing. And I could kind of picture it, the issue, just having gotten to know this person. You know, I at the time I think I would have described it as OCD, you know, just trying to get everything to, to feel perfectly aligned to, 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 to make some action. But, you know, you get in your head about it and then pretty soon you don't feel equipped in some way and then pretty soon it blows out of proportion into some kind of existential angst that catches, you know, catch your brain in a spiral and pretty soon nothing's happening and you're questioning why do anything and, and, and you know, whatever else. And this person, I don't think was a, a real risk of psychosis, but, you know, I feel like that's probably a pretty, my example of schizotypal to myself, but I think that part of this, part of the, the therapy message I have is to have some kind of open door of hope, some, some sense of progress, some, something about pathology that where the obstacle can dissolve a little bit and I feel like maybe when it's so severe that the person is basically incapable of performing to the point of choosing homelessness or not choosing it you know maybe maybe life is a is a train on some tracks or civilization is a train on tracks and then some people get torn off of it or some people just straight jump off of it and start running and uh, and maybe he's a little of both but I feel like when it gets to that level maybe that is just we can just call that schizophrenia because um, I think schizotypal you know maybe that's part of the therapy message if it's a disability it's schizophrenia or schizoaffective and you know, if you're just a weird head casey person who's, you know, got, uh, you know, who isn't this 
completely dysfunctional, maybe it's schizotypal. You know, when there's merits and a sense of hope, you know, maybe that's a progress. Go from schizophrenia to schizotypal. And then schizotypal has all these traits, schizotypy traits that have real merits, things that do belong in our gene pool, strengths. And that's a big part of my message here that is therapeutic for me as a way to look at it and to kind of build a framework for it with personality theory. Because I, I'm imagining a lot of people when they enter therapy, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're kind of like me. And they're, they're like, what, you know, they want to know what's going on. They, maybe they don't have a sense, you know, they feel weird. They, they relate to things that are like depression-like. Um, and want some sense of identity, some maybe some label to find peace in, to, to bunch up all their, all the strangeness, all the, the sense of feeling different and weird and proneness to, to, you know, isolation and solitude and seeming alien, sometimes deliberately. And it's been so lovely. I, I, I really wanted to sell people on, um, uh, join us on a subreddit called r slash schizotypal, schizotypal. Um, on Reddit, I think it's almost like we're, you know, I, I think as a group, we're, we're building this kind of therapy where it's like you ex experience another person as like a, something like a remix of yourself and it just keeps your mind open a little bit longer you know, to kind of expose something about people and about yourself. And because of that extra, like, bit of tolerance it creates, I think it, uh, you know, uh, where you're kind of experiencing each other as, e as each other, <laughs> it, uh, even when something goes wrong and somebody has trips a little bit and it, as a toxic moment it, even then it, it almost kind of feels like to me that it's just a little bit more likely that somebody might imagine oh well I get I get that look at agitated depression symptoms right that's that's what that is that guy that person's kind of slipping into the into the the thicker part of depression and, uh, you know, I, the world for some of us is just, it's just like a strange, strange circus of confusion. You know, it's like some people are acting idealistically, some people are acting animalistically, and there seems to be different languages that people are speaking. And I think that thinking of it that way and using personality theory in this way, it kind of gives us a sense of identity beyond just a personality disorder label and kind of brings it all together and I'll give you I'll, we'll, get, we'll get into it the big one as far as like language is concerned in personality typing is uh, into intuition versus sensing or in uh, so that's what the Myers-Briggs and I feel like that's definitely related to the big five's openness or intellectual curiosity. And it seems that the higher in openness or intellectually intellectual curiosity somebody gets, uh, I believe the information's out there. People high in openness, it's, it's like they're prone to magical thinking, you know? That's a, a schizotypy trait. It's, it's a symptom criteria for schizotypal. And... Um, and it's definitely important. Like sometimes I'm kind of picturing, so a lot of people with schizotypal have hypomanic type, you know, manic depression type symptoms where it's like sometimes your brain just turns into this feverish explosion of, of thinking and thoughts that just kind of pour out and, and you just want to understand or, or something isn't right and and these kind of feverish cerebral minds sometimes 
as they uh, as they get less healthy, I I think gets um, creates something really confusing for listeners that makes them seem crazy, <laughs> even though they're not, even though they're just you know lit up with some some feeling that's charging their thoughts and uh, you know maybe they're not anchoring all the all the ideas properly as, as they're coming and yeah, that seems like a pretty good way to to explain away quite a bit of the of the weird uh, you know magical thinking type thing but it goes a lot deeper than that like I think some of it goes all the way all the way deep, like yin and yang deep, you know. Order versus chaos, you know. And it, which kind of almost feeds into ideas of reference, you know, like this world, the way the world is, seems like it's trying to tell you something. And, you know, it, it's just so weird that some of the people that, uh, you know, sensors versus intuition types, chaos versus order, yin versus yang, and the the interplay between them, and the way they seem to like switch roles sometimes. You know, like yang seems like sometimes it just morphs into yin, and then yin sometimes it's like it trips and falls and acquiesces to yang. That you know that kind of vibe. But I'm. I don't want the risk here is to build inappropriately build us versus them scenarios which the world has enough of that already or othering but I kind of feel like there's a version of it that's therapeutic and then I'll show us how to and then we'll 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 and I'll show us how to to leave that but I think some of the othering makes sense because it's like some people who feel so isolated and alien in the world that alienation has a toxifying effect and they're they can't believe how close-minded people are and they just you know it's like maybe even it's maybe it's part of what triggers some of the vindictiveness of the paranoid side of cluster a you know paranoid personality disorder schizoid personality disorder schizotypal personality disorder you know odd eccentric paranoid um and uh make it, try not to lose my train of thought here <laughs> but all right so the the othering and it's like what so what happens what happens at is there something about the order types where there's some practical effect of keeping one's mind less open you know and it kind of makes sense you know it's like maybe it's like the idea that some some people become more conservative with age you know it's just like you gotta put your feet on the ground sometime to to move forward you know you gotta gotta have your feet on the earth before you can start taking steps you know maybe that's maybe that's kind of the therapy message there for for order you know get stuff done you know which i think if you're a therapist it's a it's a really valuable message to build into the head casey chaos -y types is the merits to show them the merits of conscientiousness which is you know being industrious orderly punctual all that stuff you know, because, you know, sometimes it's like if if only the person could take the, the first steps into making things concrete or making the world more orderly, you know, cleaning something, fixing something broken, you know, broken light or something that they've been procrastinating. And to kind of start that journey of becoming more earthy and practical. But there's... And also, you know, so something related to the sensing conscientious order types, maybe we'll call them, you get, there's this sense, there's this, and it has to do with conservatism, 
conservatives as an idea, it's supposed to come with a set of values. And I feel like, and I think there's plenty of reason to believe one of the core values is this sense of loyalty that's just intense. It's like everything. Who's my, who's on my team? Who's with me and against me? You know, um, and it's, and it's hackable. I, I think I've said that before. This sense of loyalty seems hackable. You know, and it, which serves a kind of practical purpose, you know, like we're, we're herd animals and being away from the herd comes with like a billion risk factors, right? So keep with the herd, have some sense of loyalty with your herd. But then the problem is, is that sometimes it's like the herd gets psychosis, you know, and herd mentality order types seem like they, um, um, trying to f find delicate ways to to put this, and it's, it's um, and now I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> oh, they they. In my culture, sometimes you hear, hear common sense. People want to talk about a lack of common sense, and I, th I think that the the herd mentality people think that they have they've got a corner on common sense. And coincidentally, some people think that schizophrenia has to do almost one of the things that characterizes it is like a total lack of sense of common sense. But I want to argue that uh, maybe on the schizotypy side, the adaptive side, maybe that's the better word. Schizo schizotypal is adaptive. Schizophrenia isn't adaptive. Well, I have an example in my mind that's a little pointed. It will seem a little charged, but uh, politically charged. But I think it's, a, it's an important example to use for showing these a lapse in the, the way people are using common sense that seems to be connected to the different languages people speak you know the intuitive language this sensing language the chaos language the order language um, i think there's a version of common sense that that sense of loyalty blinds them to that's built out of logic, you know? And the one I, I want, the example I want to use is gun violence. I live in America, and in America, gun violence is just, we're heads, shoulders, and torso above our peer countries with gun violence, and people, it's like a common political discussion of how to deal with it. Well, first, before I submit my idea, um, I lived in Japan for a while, and you know, you find out gun violence. You know, it's not zero, but it's a lot better. You know, and the only people in Japan that really own guns have guns for a reason, licensed for a very specific reason, like hunting, for instance. You know, stuff like that. And in America, there's I think the ordered the herd types it's like they're extra prone to the cult of personality just going along with the group group think and you know it's like they can give up some of their you know some simple logic and <laughs> I'm sure you're you're cringing already depending on where you are politically but bear with me in America, one of the arguments happening right now is to combat gun violence, we should radically increase the number of guns. My, I'm here to insist that increasing the amount of guns is probably not going to lower gun violence. I think that increasing guns increases gun violence. If you're a citizen of the world, and you're not locked into anything 
remotely similar to a cult of personality, you have an intuition that what I'm saying is correct. But the common sense types, it's, you know, this, we're going to break out of this us first theming in a second, but the, the common sense types, it's like, it's like they gave up their, you know, it's like, there's like a natural ability, what, 20 seconds of sustained rational thought seems like it should solve all that problem, but it's like they give it up for this like intense sense of loyalty. And I think the, the solution to this, you know, and this doesn't seem related to, to the issue of schizotypal therapy, but it is because I think that some people that get alienated by, by the herd and it, it's easy to think they're crazy or the world is so strange. And sometimes it is. <laughs> if, if you're not, uh, if you're not, uh, if that's not your disposition, you know, and I feel like because of the way openness is and it creates magical thinking and head casey people, especially like introverted head casey people, maybe become extra apprehensive of people and start choosing isolation, blah, blah, blah. It just, so to, I guess to resolve the us first them, I think is just to understand that sense of loyalty and maybe to somehow open up people to this dichotomy, you know, which is like personality theory. It's, it's a sort of freedom because otherwise, you know, depending on who you are, you hear that somebody wants to ramp up the number of guns to fight gun violence and you think that's either the toxicity might come in and you might think i'm at i am at risk of thinking that's either stupidity or it's evil and i know it's not evil always because some of those people have real values and are the type of people that see somebody on the side of a road and help them you know they're they're there's a real sense of goodwill values baked into them. And I think that, that we can expect that of conservatism, right? Family values, right? That's, that's, that's what it's supposed to be, <laughs> which is, would, is like would be lovely if it wasn't hacked. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I don't know if I'm just making excuses to complain about that, but it it really seems very related to me because I, I think also it's worth pointing out that OCDs comorbid pretty often with cluster A, not always but sometimes, and sometimes you just need something to latch on to, and that, that's part of my point here: escape from the the pit of ruminate ruminative thoughts. Get, have some way to give yourself some peace. And I feel like personality theory gives me at least a way to therapeutically put, a, put all that stuff in a box, label it, and put it away so you can move on with your life and do some of the things you, you want to do. I'd like to think it makes the world less scary and it also gives you a sense of hope you know, because it's like some of these traits are connected to personality types, like uh, schizotypal, which seems to be a heavy correlation with introverted intuitive types, you know, people high in openness, maybe not always. It seems like openness is kind of variable, especially since there's like, I don't know how open I am. I'm, I'm clearly intellectual curious, but I don't know how open to experience I am. You know, because some schizotypal people, it's like they can barely, the idea of leaving their room is almost unacceptable, let alone, you know, going bungee jumping or, or something, which a lot of the sensors, like, ooh, sorry about the microphone pop, probably. Because, um, like, 
I mean, who's more open to experience than a sensor perceiver, the SPs, the performers that we're talking in Myers-Briggs now? Um, you know, the, a lot of those people are like, want to be the ones getting good at shredding a gu- guitar and standing on the stage and doing it, you know? And it's just, especially, you know, extroverts are so bold and, and um, energetic and enthusiastic and... It just maybe that's part of it, you know. If you combine introversion, which you know maybe comes with a little bit more apprehensiveness than extroversion, of course, high openness that can get out of control to magical thinking, and then high trite neuroticism, you know, self-defeating thoughts, frustration, anxiety proneness to depression things like that which i think is about as therapeutic message as always like maybe schizotypal it's just you're a neurotic intp or infp or intj infj maybe some of the, sometimes some of the other types and it's so hopeful because all those types you know have just these things that are so exciting about them people can take those labels and have a measure of pride with them Um, because I don't think personality disorder label makes sense Um, but even if a person is going to choose in all likelihood choose solitude for the rest of their life why not have an open door somewhere in their mind where they're identifying with positive traits you know because they're they're definitely there somewhere even if they're buried way deep you know and uh the person even like i i think sometimes people get so locked in their head in a way that's like they're almost locked out of their head you know they're not they close down some other part of their brain that would go out into the world and, and be truly open, right? And so here's the other therapy message. I've, I've got, we'll give ourselves a uh, roadmap here. I'm gonna sh- add the therapy of the Enneagram to this. There's some heavy therapy messages in that. It's another personality typing system that's more about that is more centered on the conflict in people and mindfulness meditation and my kind of some of my own ideas. So the thing with the Enneagram is um, your personality is a shield. You know, if you if you can imagine a person being born is like a being of light and it's just like they have some innate born hardwired traits that kind of steer them toward going from a being of light to a being of light that, that's holding a shield or it's like the world stresses them presses them and they need to defend themselves and so the being of light starts taking on some some sludge the light starts getting obscured or the the shield gets heavier and they get more and more hid behind it and it's like the shield is their personality their version of defense and i think for schizotypal you know it's some mixture of the type four and the type five fours being the withdraw type highly individualistic and artistic and creative but also at the lower levels you know, horrifically self-destructive. And the type five, you know, these thinking types that can use this ability to, to detach, to be objective, and to, to build their sense of confidence or uh, competence, you know, like almost like, um, and I, I, I'm sure a lot of uh, all of us agree with the sentiment of if you can feel like you understand something, like really understand it, maybe it's almost like you're you've somehow freed yourself of it. And I think that's kind of 
baked into that, into the type fiveness. You know, and as as type fives get less healthy, it's like they're they're not building their competence. They they ice, you know, they detach, they detach, detach, detach. The isolation gets deeper and deeper, and then you have this feverish cerebral mind that you know falls in love with the dark and maybe even an unhealthy type five is maybe particularly terrifying, you know. And, and actually the author, oh, and I, I, I'm going to do some free marketing. Uh, I feel like the Enneagram, there's an institute, and it just feels like if I'm going to be able to talk, somebody might pick on me, so here's free marketing. There's a wonderful book, Personality Types, Using the Enneagram for Self-Discovery. just feel a responsibility to do that. Because, um, yeah, I mean, it's something you can take training courses for and things like that. And the type five, the, the authors of this, of this system, the Enneagram, suspect that there's something related to schizophrenia with type five, perhaps lower functioning fives. And that really sounds like schizotypal, right? Which is why I think, yeah, it's like the mixture of the five and the four. And uh, <clears throat> it just kind of makes sense to live your life in your head, you know, which I've kind of talked about before. But where I'm going with this is because the Enneagram is centered on these conflicts, it's also sent, and it's, it also describes levels of health and the deterioration of health going down into levels. And all the Enneagram types have this bottom level that's terrifying. Self-destruction, megalomania, being out of control, disappearing from the world um, schizophrenia um, you know one of my favorite most poetic sounding ones is the type 9 type 9s are so desire a sense of peace and harmony harmony in the world and relationships is so important to them that I think if, if the world their surroundings is just constant conflict harmony is impossible it's just like the amount of conflict shatters them eventually and it's like they're gone maybe at the lowest level they just pass through the the world like a ghost just n nothing there nothing can come in because it's they just snapped they can't handle it anymore harmony was that important you know and i think it's a lot of that like it reminds me um uh, it's kind of a funny name to to drop but uh, professor vaknin on uh, on youtube a psychologist he he has mentioned that he's not even he can't even really tell apart narcissism and schizophrenia sometimes and i think it's it's part of part of that you know the way these types are as their defenses get so steep at the lower levels it just you know it's like it's like they're just not there in some way, you know. It's maybe it's why it, they don't even seem like they have empathy. It's just like they're they've left, you know. Like maybe that's the thing about personal uh, personality disorders and mental illness. It's like some part of you just dies, you know. And here we are. We're just, you know, like I identify as schizotypal. It's, I have that thought sometimes. Is some part of me dead? And I'm just trying to keep my mind and body and spirit alive. Which, coincidentally, I think sometimes makes me f seem to myself more alive than average healthy people. Because I feel like one of, the, one of the tricks to being an average healthy, psychologically healthy person is they just don't care that much about a lot of things. You know, it's like even the fact that they're in a marriage it's like almost like barely registers you know they're in love and they have a trusting cooperative you know functioning healthy relationship that'll go to the end but you know it's just like they're just kind of less intense about it so it's, so it's almost like a funny sign of lack of mental health is when you care a lot <laughs> you know 
that's a thought I uh, there's, there's, there's some there's some personality disorder pride points it's like in a way you're dead are you dead or are you the most alive it's not even clear who knows um and now I'm way off track here but anyway there's low levels of health and the idea is you want to go up the levels of health there's a healthy version of yourself you can manifest somehow and how to do how to do that how to trigger into that and I think that's there's there's therapy that idea I think is therapy where are you in your level of health on your personality what is your conflict do you have a failed sense of competence like a five do you have no sense of you're so obsessed with identity like a four that somehow in the weirdest way you end up with no identity and you're just you're an individualist not linked to anything just a just lost at sea adrift you know which is why i think it's part of schizotypal because i think a lot of people they want they just want a label they just want to feel like somebody you know they want any identity and schizotypal kind of fits that right because it's like schizotypal probably even more than the other personality disorders has this unstable sense of ide- identity or self disorder some some people also there's this word ipsity disturbance you know it's like what in the heck am i you know to like a severe a severe degree that person's really worked up about something and i do not relate to whatever that is <laughs> you know, or or you know or vice versa um and there's another therapy message you know maybe some people their identity is so their ego is so wounded their sense of identity is so gone that they would choose to identify as schizotypal as some some it's like you it's like identifying with a lack of identity in a, in a funny way which kind of fits the type four so then you realize you gotta identify, you gotta make some decision about something you know you gotta take a step in any direction you know and that just feels that feels very therapeutic to me which maybe it's part of the order you know if you're conservative your identity is so concrete right like one of the things is that frustrates me about we'll call them maybe the order types is it's like their gender their sex is the other part the all-encompassing sense of identity what's a good man what's a good woman so it's like that sense of identity in their gender and tribalism like who's on my team and then am i a good man good woman it's like that's their entire identity and in a, in a frustrating way it doesn't seem like enough of an identity it seems it seems like build that build that out but it's, it seems like that's the beginning and end for them but it, it it works you know for them and it's like when somebody isn't that way it's almost like you're offending their core sense of self you know oh you don't even identify with a gender or oh you don't uh you think nationalism do you think there's something wrong with nationalism what's the deal there you know like nationalism is bad right i i can say that in full confidence but you know there's another language difference thing i think for some people nationalism is good tribalism is essential even though you know this is like reforming some insane paradox or something you know um so let's get back on track here so that's that's what i get out of an eogram um oh and the other one is the other big one is um that i want to suggest for therapy for your self therapy that helps me that's helping me is mindfulness meditation um especially as taught by Sam Harris and i think it's extra helpful for introverts and for the intuitive high openness types 
you know, because if you're maybe if there's another merit of being a sensor, it's that you don't you are very connected to your body. You know, it's less. You don't maybe you never have to tell an extroverted sensor that uh, they should try to reconnect with their body more. <laughs> Whereas maybe introverted intuitive types, that's that's something that really helps to take moments to be like, okay, breathe, f- feel my breathing, feel my body, feel my body in the world, in space, reconnect with my surroundings, the senses, what's happening. Okay, I'm back. The world isn't just the thoughts you're addicted to. We, we, we get addicted to our stories. Our thoughts are just these stories we get addicted to and like we're just attached to them. And it's just like the world is always this dangling carrot you're chasing after to to meet these certain very temporary sets of conditions that make you feel good. Like, oh, I finally did it. Now I can feel good, you know, and it like break off all of that. Stop identifying with your addiction to your thoughts and say, my life is the quality of my consciousness feeling my breath nothing's missing you know i i always feel like something's missing even now it's like good lord did i already ruin this video what's missing what idea is missing i'm sure (laughs) you know um and nothing you can just let yourself feel that there's nothing missing. What you have is your consciousness. You can build a sense of flourishing just by just snapping out of the addiction, reconnecting with your body, and just being conscious. You know, and it's it's beautiful. That I don't, uh, I can't sum it all up. Sam Harris has just loads of content you can explore to 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 break out of your your Id- extreme identity with your thoughts which probably is the problem sensors have to of course but you know try, trying to snap out of the othering a little bit but i think it, i think it helps you can say you know some of it there's an inevitability to some of it um and the other and beyond that i think that sometimes at a certain point you know especially at my low points you know the the world will just kind of feel like a farce you know it's just like everything's ridiculous and if the world's just going to keep being ridiculous you know it's maybe it's maybe it's our job to laugh at it you know to just to to not take it so seriously, you know, especially people, introverted intuitives, I think they're at risk of taking the world too seriously, right? You know, right? Uh, uh, healthy, normal people. It's like, maybe it's more natural that they don't take the world so seriously. Like, hey, it's calm. chill out. <laughs> you know, that, that chill out sentiment is so natural. And I feel like my way to trigger that a little bit is absurdist comedy so i want to recommend to everybody click hole it's a comedy website that uh it's like every little article is it's almost like little microcosm of psychosis and I'll, i'm gonna post some of my favorites uh just to, to use as an example also gonna post a link to a, a song by the toothpaste for dinner author a song called ohio shape and i feel like you know, almost as a meditation strategy, we can say, that's, Ohio shapes all you need. I'm going to quote it. The best state, it's Ohio shape. The best state is Ohio shape. Mental state, Ohio shape. That's great. You know, um, which if you ever want to feel like we're, you know, listening to music together, I've got my uh, songs I like to run with in public on YouTube, Energy Sage. My playlist is called Energy Sage Songs, and Ohio Shape is in there. Um, and another one is that I'll link 
is um, that I think is therapeutic. Uh, there's an old school, like a really rebellious old school psychologist whose name is Ronald David Lang. And there's a video I'll link that um, is him seemingly treating successfully somebody with paranoid schizophrenia. And it, 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 I think it perfectly captures some of the stuff I'm worried about because it, it has a sense of optimism that all you need to do is create a small shift in thinking or perspective to get somebody to re-enter the world. But it also has a, a, a sobering sense of pessimism too because the person that they get, this, this woman with paranoid schizophrenia, who they get to interact with the world um, and not just isolate into the, her typical set of paranoid thoughts, um, you know, they make the point. It's like, well, look, this woman, she's attractive, articulate, fairly intel pretty intelligent, and all this work went into giving her this 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 healthy looking moment, you know. And it's, it seems like there's plenty of reason for optimism, but also a lot of pessimism, you know, because sometimes, I mean, sometimes disabilities are just disabilities. Sometimes pathology seems like, whatever pathology is, it's like an obstacle. Some obstacles in the brain just doesn't, they don't, is, don't they just don't seem to dissolve. Um, but then at the same time, it seems like they can, immediately vanish you know which is why mindfulness meditation is so exciting it just feels like you can just vanish your own obstacles pick up the phone on yourself you know maybe you're sobbing about some horrible depressing thought and the phone rings best buy is calling about your pre-order <laughs> sorry and you and you pick up the phone on yourself you know snap out of it and you're like oh Great, thank you. <laughs> you know, so it's like you accidentally experience mindful meditation because because the store called you. Um, anyway, I think that's where I want to be. I'm sure this is a billion years long already. But I need to... Uh, I want to say just about my channel real quick. I don't post very often, partly because these give me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> I'm probably not going to sleep after I, I post this for, for a while. Um, I'm making excuses, but like, and there's always going to be something I, I want to post about. But it's it's weird having, it's an interesting experience having this, this, any number of people care about some of your content is, you know, is just, you don't want to, I, I think I'm always going to post more eventually. But I feel like um, maybe this is my cue to say, you know, so I, I don't think I'll post very regularly, but join us on Reddit, r slash schizotypal. There's so many people that are, some of, even some of my thought, some of my thoughts about, I feel like maybe one of the ways to do this routinely is for another schizotypal person, perhaps even, is to maybe be getting permission to quote things said on that on that Reddit to then to then discuss, you know, because some of the some of the stuff I've even talked about in the past about avoidant personality disorder has been so deeply informed by stuff some of those guys, some of those folks have uh, have read. I say um, that you know it just join us on there. I I kind of want to name drop some of them, but. Because they're schizotypal, who knows if they'd appreciate that or not. Probably they would, but maybe not. Who knows? But uh, join us on r slash schizotypal, and I have some channel recommendations for self, kind of self-service therapy is maybe the theme. One of them is uh, called Crappy Childhood Fairy. This woman has an understanding of emotional dysregulation that I think goes all the way down to her bones. And 
especially when she starts talking about limerence, which is like, limerence is like, uh, almost like this fantastical idea of love that somebody plays out in their mind that's not real. Um, and I think a lot of that content is good for schizotypal and not just, you know, emotional dysregulations most kind of linked up to borderline personality disorder, but I think a lot of that content's perfect for schizotypal, especially the limerence talk. Uh, Doc Snipes gives just full-on lectures about psychology concepts. Concepts, uh, Hilariously, I, somebody's going to be mad at me for even saying his name. Professor Vac Vaknin's pretty good. Um, I want to make a note. He's been the closest to getting me to... He has a video about schizoid that came pretty close to making me think that maybe I'm completely wrong about everything because he, he suggested that schizoid, schizoid people aren't um, introspective. <laughs> and I can see that lower functioning health level, you know, like maybe a low, low functioning five isn't introspective, which that, you know, that would be schizoid, right? But, you know, low functioning fives, but we're all making an effort, right? We're trying to be better. My experience in dealing with people also I'm diagnosed schizotypal other people diagnosed schizotypal my experience is a lot of them are deeply introspective and I think that's the case with schizoid too I think sometimes they're too introspective but Dr. Professor Vaknin's idea is you know introspection is kind of an introvert thing you know which who knows I mean maybe there's a message of hope if you if you identify as being a truly introspective person truly you know who knows maybe just you're just an introvert who's just a little too high just have a, a little more trait in your a little higher in trait neuroticism than than's comfortable you know but i think those sets so let's define it low extroversion high openness intellectual curiosity high trait neuroticism maybe that can that can build up schizotypy traits, schizoid and schizotypal, but you know, maybe so then maybe you're at risk of the personality disorder, but if you're actually introspection, there's your freedom. You don't have a personality disorder. If you're introspective, you can reflect and feel, you know, criticize yourself, work on your own set of value systems, feel remorse, all that stuff. Maybe you don't have you, you just have traits you know have a personality disorder maybe there's there's something helpful. Um, and also, I've named drops Jordan Peterson a billion times on this channel, and his personality lectures are just pure joy for me. I, I just they're, I can't I love them so much. His personality theory lectures he uses the five factor trait model, the big five. Um, they're so good. But it's tough. I, I feel like I, you know, he, I, he's getting. I'll give you. I'm probably wrong about this. Here's my little conspiracy theory. I, th I think that man is, is trying to appeal to right wingers. Maybe as as like, maybe his own like subversive kind of therapy. Like get them to open their minds up to other types of thinking or something, you know. Because but some of the stuff he's saying, I don't want to be attached to, you know, especially. In this on the schizotypal subreddit, we've got a bunch of trans people, and they're lovely, brilliant people. I think some of some of the people who I've identified as like just the outrageously smart are trans, and it kind of and I don't know some of that stuff. I don't. I've. I, I don't think it's responsible for me to get into it, but those are lovely people, and some of my favorite people. And, yeah. But Jordan Peterson contents sometimes good. So I, f I feel weird that I've name dropped him so many times, and there's all this other bizarre stuff happening in the world that's causing this fissure of hyper partisanship that I probably displayed in this video <laughs> as well. So 
fun in America. Anyway, I think that, oh, and Nameless Snarp, uh, there's uh, somebody who's plugged me on his channel. He's doing something lovely. Uh, his channel name is Nameless Narcissist, Diagnosed Narcissistic Personality Disorder. And I think that him and his audience want to see other personality disorders post regularly as like almost like a sense of s support and education for people. And I wish I, my anxiety about this was, I, I wish I felt equipped to post all the time like that, but I feel like I, I should plug him because he's plugged me. And I want to note about that. Nameless Narcissist is, uh, is got a beautiful project where he calls it self being self-aware narcissist, which, you know, and it, clearly there's like this support theme to his channel that's good and helpful and you know there's a sense of community probably it's part of a lot of what I'm ta talking about people wanting to have their own label and you know a lot of this personality disorders have a lot of this stuff in com identity disturbance identity uh, problems that certainly cluster B's got that all over the place I think sometimes even some of the magical thinking, you know, and of course we got Professor Vagan and not even being sure schizophrenia and narcissism are dis different. So it's like sometimes they're, some of them are just alarmingly similar, you know, like schizotypal people sometimes got this sense, like they've got some secret power, superpower, you know, like all, which I think I've even had the problem of being having a grandiose sense of my own kind of brand of intuition that's almost like a superpower you know it's like it's like grandiosity maybe takes different forms it's not always the narcissism form but i feel like as i say all this and we all enjoy this fantasy world of self-aware personality disorders narcissism i feel like i should warn people the narcissists in your life you might not get so lucky with like I I think that there's this level of selfishness and manipulation that's calloused narcissists that have heavy antisocial traits you know and I don't you want to build a, in a sense of hope into all of this but there's people that get abused by narcissists and I think the right decision is to tell them get away from the narcissist but the message to the narcissist themselves if they're working on themselves is hope but uh, goodness some of the getting continually manipulated for you know whatever it is money sex attention And you're being repaid with emotional, spiritual level, like emotional, psychological, spiritual level torment. Like I, I don't. Know. Narcissists hurt. Border, antisocial borderlines hurt. Um, save yourself. <laughs> don't. You know, it's it's almost like sometimes it seems like cluster B. It's it's like there's this petty pettiness version of a blood feud that you get locked into you know and it's just like eye for an eye and it's just this it just hurts Be, you know i think it's tough there's such a tough divide there to be optimistic to be healing somebody suffering and they're trying to heal somebody got abused and they're trying to heal it's a tough it's it's very tough and it's tough the interplay of that and cluster A because cluster A's have this kind of double-edged sword where it's like the paranoia will maybe protect them from some of that like no that that hurts so I I on to you and sometimes it's premature sometimes cluster A gets suspicious of people who are just average people that you know just a collection of good and bad but you know ultimately open to criticism and able to apologize and all that stuff but uh, but 
the good part of it is, you know, it's like you don't want to be suspicious of the wrong people, but then sometimes that paranoia is rewarded. You know, trait neuroticism has you rewarded through safety, I guess, you know, even though solitude, you can like fall off the other side of the balance, right? Um, and I think that's where I want to be. Um, yep, yep, yep. Sorry that this is definitely a million years long, but uh, I don't post very often. And probably the people that care about this content the most are frustrated that I don't post a lot. And then, then you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's okay that it's kind of kind of long. But yeah, join us on r slash schizotip. We'll click on go to crappy childhood fairy, Doc Snipes, all that all that lovely stuff. And I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Going over my my big basket of notes. And uh, see you later, friends.